Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea for our Monday morning. Uh, I think it's still morning. It's not afternoon yet. Monday morning update on uh, yeah, my opinion on precious metals and what the best deals are and some other things. Let's get into that right now here. And this is the uh, Coral City Cam. Lots of Sergeant Majors out there. Some really beautiful tropical fish uh, I've been watching all morning. Uh, and again, if you if you ever if your blood pressure ever gets a little too high, or you get a little upset. Grab a glass of wine. Grab a, a glass of coffee, bourbon, whatever it is you drink. Sit down in front of the computer and put on the Coral City Cam for a little while uh, during the day, obviously. And uh, boy, it has a very calming effect. At least it does for me. Uh, especially with all this turmoil going on in the world, economically, politically, you name it. I uh, saw this little uh, quote here. Actually, I got it from Ted Butler. He had put it on his uh, 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 site, and uh, I said, I like that quote. I'm going to use this for today. Uh, and this is by the Ludwig von Mises uh, Institute. Um, actually, I quoted, that's how I get kicked off FB. I got, I got kicked off, uh, uh, my, my account got closed permanently for quoting the Ludwig von Mises account, uh, uh, website, actually. And they're a think tank out of, I think, where are they, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia or something. But here you go. There is no means of avoiding the final collapse of a boom brought about by credit expansion. The alternative is only whether the crisis should come sooner as a result, result of voluntary abandonment of the further credit expansion or later as a final and total catastrophe of the catastrophe of the currency system involved. Okay, and <clears throat> of course, I think what we really have learned here, uh, Ludwig von Mises Institute points this out perfectly. There's two ways to kind of look at this. I mean, it's obviously this is uh, the issues we got uh, going on right now with uh, excessive money printing, excessive spending, excessive this, excessive that, uh, uh, just over the top is really. <sighs> We already know where we're going. We already know where governments and uh, central banks are going with this. They're going to double down on stupid. That's what they do. They're doubling down on stupid. So it's not going to be a uh, 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 a result of voluntary abandonment. Uh, our government and our uh, obviously our government for sure uh, and the central banks who seem to want to accommodate them probably because it's their largest customer are not going to abandon. Uh, the uh, further credit expansion. In fact, they're going to just keep pushing it. They're going to double down on stupid. They're going to keep spending more money. They're going to keep uh, uh, printing more money. Uh, this is what they do until we get this, exactly as Ludwig von Mises, Mises points out, a catastrophe of the currency system involved. So what happens after this ca uh, currency ca catastrophe? Well, people try to flood to, uh, let me close that door, give me one second here. Uh, people try to flood to, uh, you know, the uh, Gresham's Law, which is uh, 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 good money will drive out bad money. More or less, people will uh, uh, hoard good money, you know, things like gold, and obviously cryptos, people feel cryptos are good money. So uh, people will hoard those type of things, and, and they won't... There's a lot of th different things going on here besides uh, Gresham's Law. Uh, we also have the fact, you know, again, they're going to double down on stupid. They're, I don't think they're, they're going to discontinue these programs of spending, folks, and, and, and creating more money and more money and more money. Um, idiot, idiotic theories like MMT. Uh, I mean, it's just going to drive the system into a complete, utter collapse. And maybe ultimately that is the plan, a complete ultimate collapse, because what happens then? What governments always do, they create the problem, and then they come in like they're your savior and save you, okay? Uh, and how are they going to save you? Well, the best way they know how to. They're probably going to, first thing they're going to do when the economy takes a giant crap, and here's my, here's my, you know, this is what I'm, I'm thinking is going to happen in the future, um, and besides gold and silver. And gold and silver tie into this very, very well, so follow through with me here, uh, because that's going to be the way of keeping your the preservation of wealth. And I know I say this over and over, but it's absolutely true. Um, but uh, when, when the system does collapse because they have doubled down on stupid, uh, as I said over and over, that's what they do. Uh, they don't admit they make mistakes. They don't back off. They don't create a different program. Governments and central banks just keep doing what they do. Uh, but I don't think central banks are that stupid. Well, I think governments are pretty stupid. I think the central bankers are like Oz, you know, the, the Wizard of Oz, the guy behind the curtain or the person behind the curtain. Um, and uh, they're pulling all the strings out there. And they, there are several chess moves ahead of governments. There are several chess moves ahead of a lot of different people, I believe. I don't think they're that, really. These are highly, tr you know, these are highly trained people on, uh, uh, on uh, how to... Uh, 
uh, create money out of thin air. So, and they've been doing it for a long time, successfully to some degree. Not successful for them, not for us, obviously. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, these are not stupid people. And what they're going to do when the whole system collapse, I believe that the Fed is going to roll out a digital currency of some sort. Uh, the first people that will be without jobs are the people, the poor. The poor always get screwed the worst. Poor and the working class people, those are who get screwed the worst. They always do. It's typical with governments because that's the biggest crowd. That's the biggest voting crowd out there as well for governments. So they'll get screwed worse uh, out, of, uh, out of everybody because it's just poor decisions by the people they voted for. Uh, blue and red. I'm sorry, it's true. Uh, but uh, no less, I digress there. I'm not going to go off into politics. Um, so what will happen is they'll destroy the world. The Fed will come out with their CDBC, whatever the frick it is, uh, 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 Fed digital credits or whatever. And um, the first thing the Fed will do is we'll, they'll come to our or they'll come to our rescue, okay? And they'll issue the poor and they'll issue the uh, middle class, you know, the hurting middle class, lower middle class, mid, upper, you know, middle middle class in general. Uh, they'll start giving them money. Here, here, we're here to save you. We're here to help. Um, and it'll be directly, so that's how they will get people used to digital credits because think about it. Now all of a sudden you got a huge poor, you know, huge amount of poor people and a huge amount of the middle class uh, uh, getting these digital credits directly from the Fed. No one's going to say no to free money. You know this. I know this. We should now, we should tell them right now we don't want to cash to society, but this is where it's going, folks. So th they'll create these digital credits and they'll give them to people for free. And of course, Business people are going to want to cash in on this, especially big corporations. They'll make the most money. Uh, so they'll be all set up to take these uh, Fed digital credits, which will be uh, uh, highly trackable, highly taxable, and, and maybe might even be able to turn them on and off at will. Uh, possible. I'm not quite sure, but I see that's where it's headed. It's not, it's not about a digital society and cash. It's about knowing everything you do, every cent you spend, and making sure that you don't do any, don't even make a dime without paying at least your taxes on it. So uh, <clears throat> it's just a ax over the uh, population's head as far as privacy goes and in so many different ways. And financial privacy is one of the most important things out there. So uh, this is where it's going. And uh, they'll crash the whole thing. And the Fed will sit there smiling the whole time saying, all right, plan B or not plan B. Next step, uh, roll out the digital currencies and start giving them away for free. Let's let's go in as their friends and save them all. And like I said, everybody likes free money, so they're going to take it. They're going to take whatever little amount. The poor is going to take whatever amount they can get uh, of these free digital credits, and uh, uh, so will the rich. Now this this is one. Of, this is what I see happening, and this is where I see the digital cashless society going into a very dangerous place. And the first place to get acceptance, again, will be the poor and the middle class. And why will they accept it? Because it'll be free and they'll be broke. Uh, and why were they broke? Well, because the people in charge basically broke them, but they're too stupid to know that because generally they sit there and they watch their half hour of corporate news nightly and in the morning, CNN, uh, Fox, whatever their favorite flavor is, um, and they get their couple minutes of sound bites. They, they have no clue. The vast majority of people have no clue what's going on when it comes to economics and politics pretty clearly. Uh, we wouldn't be in this trouble uh, that we were. We wouldn't have shit political candidates like we have had for decades right now. If we actually paid attention to something more than a 30 second soundbite every morning and every evening, uh, again, let's get out of here. So, hey, hey, uh, boy, I started off the uh, morning pretty good. Let's. I'm going to talk about uh, what the best deals out there. There seems to be a product uh, shortage in uh, silver right now and some gold products, but mostly in silver. To, no surprise to me, we've got a lot of things to discuss here, some really cool things. Let's first get into spot prices. Um, I'm going to refresh this. If you notice, green, 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 silver, platinum, the, the white metals are up a little bit, 2273, and gold is just down just a tad. Uh, that looks healthy to me to some degree. Well, as healthy as you can say, rigged and manipulated markets are. <laughs> so uh, let me do a quick refresh here. And, uh, and don't get discouraged. We know how markets are rigged. That's how we're going to make our monies. Uh, up a buck thirty, so everything across the board here up tiny, tiny bit. Uh, not much action in metals markets right now. Uh, no big news out there. We're going to discuss about uh, uh, what happened last Friday, I believe, with that big up day. You know, it was big up in the morning, and all of a sudden, boom, all day long, all happening in New York. Uh, I'd like to think that uh, I'd like to mention too that Ted Butler pointed that out. Uh, 
And before I get there, let's just kind of talk about metals right here. Uh, low is 1751, a high is 1761, uh, about a $10 range there. Currently sitting right at that, uh, near that high 1760, but not a big deal. Kind of tepid trading, if you can call it tepid. Uh, silver 2279 right now. Uh, low at 2253, 2284, about a 25 cent range. Not that crazy 50 cent dollar, 80, 50 cent, 80 cent dollar moves that we've been seeing lately. Uh, again, we're going to talk about what happened on Friday too, because you know silver broke that 23 range, 2320 I think was a high on Friday. Uh, gold had done pretty well too. I forget 1770, 1780 or something. Uh, platinum up too. There's my little tell sometimes. Platinum was up the other day and up this morning, uh, up 75 cents and uh, sitting over that thousand dollar mark right now. Still holding on to that thousand plus. You know for for quite some time we were we were sub 900. Um, things are happening, man. I, things are uh, things are boiling. I can you know my hearing's not that great, but I can hear something boiling. So uh, uh, cool market here, and uh, let's move over to. Uh, I'm excited about a recent subscription I got. I've talked about Ted Butler for a long time. Uh, I've read a lot of his articles from Silver Seek and some other places. Um, you know his free articles and things that were online, which you can read here. Uh, oh, here, let me not show that there. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to. All right. So, uh, and, and I recently subscribed to uh, uh, Ted Butler's uh, Butler Research here, uh, and I recently became a subscriber and started reading his new articles. Uh, really impressed. Uh, I mean, he's far smarter than I am when it comes to uh, how these markets are rigged and the uh, manipulation of these markets. Who does it? And uh, I'm going to get into that a little bit here. Uh, however, for the cost, if you have enough silver on hand and you're a silver, you know, if, if you're uh, buying and selling silver and uh, you, you can see yourself paying 30 something dollars a month, I think that's about what it is for the basic uh, uh, subscription. Uh, I would highly recommend, uh, whether you're a dealer, whether you're uh, listening to me right now, uh, or whether you're a, uh, uh, someone that tracks precious metals, or you're a, uh, uh, an investor and you have enough money that you can justify the 30 bucks a month. I mean, that's a little costly for some people. I mean, if you, you know, so I would, you know, you'd have to have a use for it. Otherwise, you can listen to me and I'll try to not, I'm not, I'm not going to show you what he says on here again because it's a paid subscription. That wouldn't be fair and this is how this gentleman makes his money. But my gosh, what a great uh, a great reading that, and he explains it in detail and he explains it in a, in, a, in, a, in ways that you can kind of clearly understand. So uh, uh, I kind of want to get into a couple things here as well that he talks about. Ted Butler talks about the two primary players. At Comics, it is is the uh, form in which the you know comics picture comics is the football field all right and the uh, comics people that run comics run the football field basically and you've got these different teams that are playing on the field so comics basically provides the arena for the trading that's the simplest way to explain it to a lot of my friends here and what Ted Butler's been talking about for years longer than anyone else and he's dead out and accurate I believe um, is that the uh, the manipulation of silver now not gold we're going to get into gold in a minute gold's a whole different thing here but the manipulation of silver for for years and years and years um, uh, by the same players. Now, who were these players and who are these players? Well, you know, he goes back to pointing out that, that the, the players, I remember the players, uh, uh, who was it, uh, Lehman Brothers or Bear Stearns or somebody like that? I, think, I guess I don't remember, but I think it was Lehman held a huge short position on silver that who J.P. Uh, Morgan ended up inheriting. And you guys know all about the story about J.P. being one of the uh, commercial banks uh, that... Uh, um, that manipulated silver and gold markets. So, uh, and there's the, the other players who are the uh, managed money players, and these are two different types. So, you've got the Comex, which has the arena and is supposed to make sure that all the players are paying fairly, but they don't do that. They're there to make sure they make the most money they can and that the players make the most money they can. The big players, they want to keep the big players happy. And who are the big players? It's managed money and commercial banks. All right, that's the big players. So that's Comex's job. So that's why they turn a blind eye to uh, uh, this manipulation with managed money and commercial banks because they make a ton of, ton of money on it. Uh, so that's the most likely reason. Uh, or the other good, good reason is that the... Uh, uh, people that keep getting hired into Comex uh, and the CFTC or well, I'm not. I know I, I can't say Comex. They're not stupid people. They're making money on it. The regulators who are supposed to regulate Comex are the stupid people, more than likely. Uh, so, uh, and again, that's just my opinion. 
And uh, so you got these, uh, you got comics, they run the arena, and uh, you got managed money, and you got the commercial banks down there fighting out. Ted talks about this uh, uh, in, in his uh, newsletters quite frequently, and like I said, highly recommend you read it, Ted Turner and subscribe to him. Uh, investment banking versus commercial banker. Now, Ted talks about commercial banks, and, and again, these are the two players in the arena fight, fighting each other, uh, more or less, and, and making, or or at least one of them thinks they're fighting each other, according to Ted here. Uh, we're talking about commercial banks right here. And what is a commercial bank? Commercial banks accept deposits. Uh, investment banks, on the other hand, and uh, give me one second here. Commercial banks, investment banks, um, investment banking uh, versus commercial banks. I'm sorry, I got that a little backwards, okay? Uh, I'm talking about... Uh, uh, it probably is it the commercials or the bank or commercials commercial banks accept deposit and make loans safeguard assets and work with many types of clients including the general public and businesses investment banks on the other hand provide service to large corporations and institutional investors now if I'm pretty sure we're, we're talking about commercial bank not investment banks that uh, have been the manipulators the big four to eight short positions in uh, uh, precious metals for a long time uh, and again if everyone remembers JPM JP has gotten out of its uh, big short position and what did they do they accumulated almost a billion ounces of silver and 30 million ounces of gold by playing that market and they got caught for it they got caught for their shit and uh, paid big fines on it but they made a fortune they made a billion dollars or more at least uh, even though they might have paid a billion in fines it was certainly worth it for them and they were able to accumulate probably one of the largest uh, uh, silver uh, positions out there that I'm aware of uh, in the United States you know, again, nearly they accumulate nearly a million ounces off this manipulation. Uh, so they're uh, they've either loaned out this gold, I mean this silver and this gold uh, to people for you know to cover short positions or ETFs or whatever the hell they're doing with it, uh, and or uh, they're waiting for the upside to go up. How much of this gold and silver JPM actually owns, and how much have they they've actually leased out or or whatever loaned out? I don't know. Uh, but no less, uh, they can't get hurt right now. In fact, they're in a good position if precious metals go up substantially. Now, <clears throat> now the other players, the main players are the commercial bankers. Ted says there's like four to eight out there in silver. The big four, he kind of calls it, the rest of them are the smaller players, uh, uh, or the ones that have been holding these huge short positions for years and years and years. Uh, they've basically gotten away with this manipulation. It's just a, it's, it's just, they purposely do it to make money, and and, and again, that's uh, uh, well, you know, that sounds like capitalism, but it's really not, and we'll get into that later as well. Uh, this this is taking advantage of these short positions and and forcing these markets down uh, without any physical silver behind it whatsoever. There's no physical trading behind it, uh, at least there wasn't. And what is money manage, uh, or what is uh, uh, manage money? Manage money is uh, refers to a strategy in which investors use the service of professional investment managers. Now, what Ted has been saying for a long time is that the commercial bankers, uh, or they're the smart guys. Uh, I think he's talking about commercial bankers, not investment bankers. The commercial bankers are the ones that held these large positions. But for for these large short positions, you have to have people on the long side as well. So that's who the money, the, the managed money is. Managed money. Uh, pretty much those guys don't really they look at charts so and they look at movements so manage money guys more or less when they see something moving up you know they've got themselves positioned where uh, they've got a hedge on their trades or making so much money per trade uh, when the markets move up they, they sell or, or or maybe short a position I think what Ted's talking about is a lot of these commercial banks uh, have lost uh, recently he said over eight billion dollars. Uh, I mean, it was even higher at one time, but they've managed to bring the silver price down substantially. Uh, so uh, that, that's, uh, they're down to an eight billion dollar loss. I think he said the big four, the big eight, uh, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so this is the reason that you've seen silver uh, go from thirty dollars down to where it is right now. These are these huge uh, uh, silver positions, these huge short positions, the four to eight banks. Again, JP is not in there. They're not a player in that market anymore, or at least we don't think they are. Uh, so that's why you saw silver. The lo the losses to these four to eight banks that were shorting were, were tremendous at one point, with silver uh, uh, nearing that thirty dollar mark. Uh, so, but what they have managed to do is they've managed to knock it down with these short positions and. 
And again, that's just sheer manipulation using, you know, no, uh, again, nothing to do with physical markets at all. So those are the two players. You've got, uh, you got the Comex who runs the arena, uh, and then you've got your referees and judges who are supposed to be the CFTC or somebody who, who don't know what they're doing. That's why nothing gets done there. And then you've got the players, which are really, you and I are not players on a large scale at all in any significant term at all. Uh, you got the major players out there who, who direct the spot price that you see every day is managed money currently and commercial banks. Uh, and those are your two, uh, uh, those are your two players that are, are uh, uh, out there uh, screwing everybody else in my opinion. Uh, so we'll get into something else here. Gold manipulation, entirely different thing. You can't really tie these two things in together. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, silver uh, manipulation, there's no better guy to read than Ted Butler. Type Ted Butler, Butler Research. You might, you're going to have to pay for this uh, service, but I recommend it. But Ted Butler, read whatever you can find on him. Uh, he's going to tell you everything you need to know about the silver, the manipulation of silver markets, and he's freaking spot on. So listen to what that man says, and uh, you will be way smarter, and you will, uh, you will preserve your wealth and make some good money, in my opinion. So uh, definitely read whatever you can on Ted Butler. Uh, so let's move over here to uh, uh, GATA.org. Now these are the, the guys that, they're the uh, Ted Butlers of the gold world, in my opinion. GATA.org has been around for quite some time. Um, I don't exactly even know who runs it. We can look at that here about GATA.org. And uh, uh, the GATA.org uh, uh, was organized in the fall of 1998 to expose, oppose, and litigate against the collusion to control the price and supply of gold and related instruments. Uh, the committee arose from essays by Bill Murphy, a financial commentator on the internet. Uh, yeah, I've seen that, uh, lametropolecafe.com. Uh, that's a subscription service, too. I may have to take a look at that as well. And by Chris Powell, a newspaper editor in Connecticut. And uh, Murphy's essay reported evidence of collusion among the financial institutions to suppress the price of gold. Uh, Powell's, whose newsletter has been involved in antitrust litigation, replied with an essay proposing that gold mining and investor interests should act on Murphy's uh, essays. And more or less, um, the manipulation of the price of gold. And it's the same thing with silver. Uh, I believe that there's a silver mine in Florida that's starting to sue uh, Comex or something right now, or, or sue JP, you know, sue JPM because JPM got busted red-handed. So there's actually evidence that JPM manipulated markets. Therefore, they have opened up to themselves to civil suits. And uh, they're exactly right. Think about all the private investors in silver and gold uh, for decades and decades and decades. And you remember when silver and gold were, were skyrocketing in 2012? Uh, and silver got hammered, monkey hammered down substantially. That was these four to eight big, that was JP at the time. I mean, what was? And, and how many people and mine, mines and, and, and everyday average working folks out there that bought silver and people that worked at the mines and the, uh, and the people that have investments in silver because they know it's a, a form of wealth preservation uh, got, got manipulated and uh, 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 fraudulently manipulated down. Uh, that market, silver should still be 50 bucks an ounce right now. And that was the short position. They had lost a huge amount of money. They were, and I don't know how they did it, but they short the four to eight banks there, and JPM was included in 2012 during our last bull market, was responsible for driving that market down, uh, it, at least in silver. Now, when it comes to gold, uh, the players are, uh, you got to read the basics here. Um, uh, give me one second here. Let me uh, make that just a tad smaller. So you can read that a little bit better. And there we go. Uh, GATA financed the federal antitrust lawsuit of a, its consultant, uh, HAL versus the Bank for International Settlements. Uh, so these guys, and this is a whole different thing than the silver manipulation. So you've got to separate gold manipulation from silver manipulation. Silver, mani silver is such a small market. It's been around for years. Governments really don't play in it too much per se. Uh, so it really, it wouldn't be much government intervention when it comes to silver. It's basically a small marketplace that some uh, big commercial banks and managed money have managed to get in or have gotten into for years and years and years and manipulated this very small market to make billions of dollars. That's what the silver market is. Gold market's an entirely different thing. These guys are talking about uh, uh, BIS, uh, Barrick, uh, give me one second here, let's, let's read this. Uh, home, how versus the Bank for International Settlements. So these guys are uh, God is talking about the manipulation coming from like you know the bankers themselves. Now that's a whole different deal than silver, folks. You got to separate the two. You got two markets here being directly manipulated. 
but when you're talking about government manipulation by uh, in, you know biz, okay, and and big uh, government, you're talking about that's the 800 pound gorilla. So um, the one thing they don't want anybody messing with. Remember, central banks own gold. They don't own digital fiat. They don't own uh, their own currency. They don't own uh, 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 pfft, you know, diamonds or whatever, they own gold. That's what they put in their vaults. And, and if you, you were going to read, you're going to see that Poland wants to add another hundred million, uh, uh, what is it, uh, what is it, a hundred million dollars or something like that. We'll, we'll take a, we'll take a look at it in a moment, but add to their central bank's own gold. So those are the manipulators in the gold market, an entirely different market, an entirely different, different manipulated market. But I've told you this for years and years, all markets are manipulated, even the stock and bond market. If someone takes the time to look, a lot of denial out there that it is, but uh, it really, it's manipulated by the big players who are in bed with governments. Okay, that's how this happens. It's crony capitalism. It's not real capitalism. It's called crony capitalism. Um, you know, when, when, when these big banks are too big to uh, uh, fail and too big to jail, that's crony capitalism in its purest form. They don't arrest their buddies that they made a lot of money off. That's a fact. Uh, so, uh, I guess uh, they've got a lawsuit, G uh, GATA uh, had a lawsuit in, 2000, in 2002, uh, but it was dismissed by a jurisdictional technicality, but it yielded a lot of important information. Uh, I could go into the, I have been, for, for you gold guys out there, uh, or for you folks that own silver and gold, because we just discussed who to read and who to, who, who to listen to when it comes to manipulation of silver prices, uh, now I'm telling you about who to listen to when it comes to gold. Uh, there's a lot to read here. You got the basics, the gold manipulation here, uh, done by Chris Powell. Uh, why, how, and how long? Again, totally different deal than the uh, uh, manipulation of silver, uh, which Ted Butler is probably the pre pre premier expert in the world on silver manipulation. Uh, I'd say GATA.org is probably the premier uh, uh, expert when it comes to gold manipulation. So you need to know this stuff, folks. I've said it for a long time. The game is rigged. The game is rigged since you were born, okay? Um, whether it's uh, markets, politics, economics, uh, elections, it's rigged, man. It's the whole system is rigged since the day we were born. A lot of us want to be in denial, but uh, uh, it's, it's true. It's true. But you know how you win? If you know you win if you know how the game is played okay if you become if you become uh, knowledgeable in how they do it who does it why and especially when wins the big question especially when it comes to economics win will make you a lot of money and I got a feeling that we're close to that win point here as far as markets go well I'm gonna get out of GATA.org I highly recommend again you know me when it comes to them you must have GATA.org on your bookmark bar when you're when you're uh, 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 buying and selling gold and trying to understand that market and you also when it comes to silver there's no better guy to have on your bookmark bar or at least uh, if you're not subscribed to him, go out and look for his free articles on Google. Just type in Ted Butler Silver, and you're going to find a lot of good articles on silver. And you'll be smarter than most people out there that are even investing in silver. Trust me on this. Um, whew, trust me. I sound like a banker, huh? A politician. <laughs> Uh, Ronan Manley. All right, I'm not going to get into this article. I uh, again, I'm going to suggest you read it. Uh, Poland central bank's plans to accelerate the accumulation of gold, hundred tons. I'm sorry, my numbers are just. I add zeros to everything now. Uh, why not? Why not? Governments and um, and uh, uh, bankers do it. Okay, uh, hundred tons of gold bars in London, and then promptly flew them back to work. So. Um, Poland is adding, again, central bank. Here's the key word. What are they buying? What is the central bank of Poland buying? There's central banks all over the world, folks. Uh, our bank, and they're all competitive against each other in some degree, but what do they all hold? Gold, G-O-L-D, okay? Um, Wall Street silver interviews. Uh, oh, it's good to see. I, you know, I think I've seen a few of the Wall Street uh, 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 interviews are pretty good. Uh, steer on monetary metals price suppression. Well, I'm glad Wall Street Silver is interviewing GATA.org when it comes to gold, but uh, I wonder if they've done anything with Ted Butler. I haven't looked. Wall Street Silver should really interview Ted Butler. Uh, lost in the twilight zone. Peter Schiff can't understand why gold doesn't keep up with inflation. Man, Peter Schiff gets a lot of shit. shit Schiff, gets, <laughs> Schiff gets a lot of shit. Uh, give me one second here. Got a little sip of coffee. Hmm. However, um, um, I like Peter Schiff. I mean, you know, Peter Schiff, his expertise is really 
with understanding how central banks work and understanding how uh, the credit expansion and all that stuff. I don't think Peter Schiff has really stuck his head too much in the GATA.org or, uh, you know, that markets are manipulated. However, you know, everybody has their expertise. And, and I think it's a little rough that GATA.org would come in here and, and, you know, bash a guy because he hasn't spent the time that GATA.org has done on manipulation. Uh, one thing that Peter Schiff is good at, he understands the expansion of the credit bubble, okay? He sees the effect that that does have on the price of gold. Even GATA.org uh, has to acknowledge that uh, without the manipulation, uh, Peter's exactly correct. You know, these these uh, this credit expansion should have prices just beyond the roof. All right, the fact that Peter hasn't come out and openly said that, you know, you know, it's not his expertise. Number one and number two, uh, um, you know, he, he that's his opinion. Okay, so. Uh, I, I don't think you can throw the bath the baby out with the bathwater when it comes to Peter Schiff, that's for sure. I don't think we've ever heard Peter Schiff say he doesn't believe it's manipulated. I just think he's never really acknowledged that it is and talked about it. I could be wrong on that. But I thought this article by GATA.org was a little bit rough on him. And uh, uh, some good stuff to read here, too. Uh, one of my favorite articles here all week, and it's so long. It's on ZH. You can read it for free, uh, Zero Hedge. Uh, it's authored by Egon von Greyers. Let's just click right to his website, give him some credit here. Uh, I don't know exactly what they sell there. Um, I don't think they sell physical, but no less. Uh, uh, I like his articles. Very, very good. Will goal reach an unthink unthinkable heights? I'm going to go back real quick because I can read this a little bit easier. Uh, long article, and I'm going to show you how long it is. This is why we're not going to sit here and talk about it. Uh, or, or I'm not going to read it to you. You know, uh, I, you definitely need to read this. Look at this. We go on and on. There's pages. If I read this to you, this would be a two-hour uh, deal here. <laughs> uh, let me see if he's got a, oh, God, I hate to do an end in a spoiler, but uh, let's see if he's got kind of like a synopsis at the bottom. Uh, oh, no, hold on. I took it. I didn't take that from Ted Butler. I took it from uh, uh, his article, as Von Mises said. Sorry about that. forgot who I took that little uh, quote from. Uh, remember that this is nothing as uh, uh, the implosion. Well, basically, because of the size of the bubble, the implosion would be greater than any time in history. We've been talking about that. Uh, Charles Hugh Smith, who I like to read his stuff as well, um, talks about the greatest bubble of all time, the G-boat. That's what we're in. Uh, in such a depression, everyone will suffer greatly, even gold holders. But just as any crisis, physical gold will serve it as the best insurance you can own. And I believe the same thing with silver, because silver will follow gold. And at that point, you know, when the whole system collapses, I mean, everything's going to come down with it, even gold and silver prices, but you won't be able to buy the real stuff. That'll be all the paper um, and derivatives and stuff, that whole market crashing, everyone selling out of it, getting out to cover their margin calls, blah, blah, blah. Um, what will the, go the, the value of the gold be when the dollar goes to zero? You know, a couple of little interesting points. I read the whole article. It's really good. Again, you should read it. Um, for reference, well, whatever level will be totally meaningless since the other side of zero is infinity. Basically, what he's talking about here is that even gold is priced in dollars, okay? Uh, so, you know, if you think that, you know, oh, I'm getting, you know, if gold goes to $5,000 an ounce, that is, you've preserved your wealth at this point. Trust me. you got to think about what other things are going to. If gold's at $5,000 an ounce, and you see how reluctant gold and silver have been to go up with all the other commodities, okay? So when gold finally gets brought up to that point, that $5,000 range, $3,000, $5,000, that whatever it will be, inflation will be pretty horrific at that point. And what you will be most thankful for, you're going to say, well, I'm not as rich as I thought, but holy crap, you're going to look around you and you're not going to be as poor as everyone else. So that's the whole deal behind that. Uh, and everything, he talks about some other good things here, how people say, oh, if you had been invested in the stock market, the Dow, you'd have made a lot of money. But it's time points. If you invested in the Dow at, in 2009 after the financial collapse, okay, and you were invested now, you would have made a lot of money. However, what they don't talk about when they give you these time frames and, and equities and stuff is that if you had invested in 2007, you would have lost 80% of your value up in 2008, okay? So you, anyone can take a price point and say, oh, if you have only invested, but gold and silver, if you take the price point from the beginning, you know, 100 years ago, and you look at that line, that line goes up consistently. It's to the moon, basically. And But it's like a roller coaster. It's like a roller coaster to the moon. The ultimate trajectory is up. However, you're going to have a lot of choppy ride in between. And this is all because of money expansion and fiat. 
Um, there's some big numbers in here. Uh, they're talking about gold reaching 4,000. There's some people that think it's going to reach 5,000 and 10,000. Uh, he personally believes, the gentleman that wrote this article, who I always egregiously uh, screw up his name, sorry. <laughs> I'm on the record for more than 10 years saying that gold reached 10,000 in today's money. But it's all relative and... Um, Gosh, you know one other thing that he said in this article, if I'm going to read anything here, uh, I want to read this because this is super important. Um, personally, I believe that uh, uh, the target is much more conservative, uh, too conservative on gold at 4,000. He's on the record for saying 10,000, but that projection, like all others, is totally meaningless. As I discussed above, it serves no purpose to measure gold in currency, which is being debased by the day. Much better to than to measure gold in the example for Big Macs, and he's right about that. But there's only one valid measure of gold, that is how many ounces or grams you hold. Any other measure is totally nonsensical. And again, he's basing it on what the dollar is. You know, the dollar is just declining year after year. It's a bubble we're in, a huge bubble. So we do price our gold and silver in dollars, and he's, he's kind of pointing out that's kind of meaningless. Uh, the other thing that uh, uh, he points out here, and I love this right here, the most valuable asset that most people hold is their family. Who values that in dollars? So, <laughs> wow, he's valuing gold up there, right up there with uh, uh, family. And, and again, you can't put your family in, in, in the, a dollar value, or most of us can't unless we're psychopaths. Um, so that's a whole different discussion. <laughs> uh, but uh, well, that's a great uh, subject. You can't, you can't value your family in dollars. And you know what? You really can't value your gold and silver in dollars. You know, Remember, gold and silver is not made by a guy named Satoshi. It's not made by... Uh, some brilliant central bankers. It's not made by government. It's not gold and silver is made by colliding neutron stars. Now, some people can say, oh, yeah, we're going to go out and mine it one day, but that is way, way down the road, and I guess it won't even be that cheap, and maybe gold and silver won't buy matter by then. We'll be on full M MMT. <laughs> Just joking. I hope not. Um, there's, uh, again, that was uh, the gold standard ain't coming back. This is, uh, uh, let me see that's a different article here. And let me give you the uh, credit here. I want you to read this, please, again. Von Greyers, go to uh, ZH, Will Gold Reach Unthinkable Heights? Excellent article by Egon Von Greyers. Uh, again, sorry if I messed up your name, sir. Uh, you write some good stuff, though. Uh, ZH, um, some other good articles on here. Um, gold Standard Ain't Coming Back. I didn't read that. I like uh, uh, VBL stuff. And uh, although I'm not much into... Uh, 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 leveraging and, and weekly selling. They're kind of like day traders, I think, a little bit. They talk about trading on a daily basis in metals, something I don't really advocate because it, really I don't understand it that well. I can't trash it. There's guys that make, again, if you know how a market and a game is played, you can win at it. And those guys, I think they know what they're doing. Uh, hmm. Oh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. And uh, <laughs> sarcastically, I say, dip buyers beware, key events, uh, CPI print coming up. Uh, retail sales. That CPI print might be uh, uh, kind of uh, astonishing. Let's see what it does to the price of gold and silver when we hit that on Friday. Um, hmm, interesting. Well, it'll be up or down. And again, if you're in the silver market, you'll know exactly who did that. It'll be managed money or commercial banks. Don't forget to read Ted Butler today. <laughs> uh, Metropolitan Police uh, drop latest probe. Oh, so I should. What am I reading that stuff for? That's way off from what we're talking about. Um, not too much to talk about on ZH. I think I hit a couple of the good articles we've already seen there. And uh, silver bulls, all my silver bulls out there. You know, I always talk about gold frequently, but silver is my favorite metal. Uh, gold is about wealth preservation, so is silver, but I think silver has got a great chance of doubling up here. Uh, much better or faster than the price of gold once that uh, gold to silver ratio tightens up to where it really should be, especially on the realities of physical metal out there, which are getting tougher and tough to get. Like to put a shout out to all the Wall Street people. That group seems like it keeps growing and growing. Here, don't mean to make you dizzy. Turn your head aside while I scroll to the top here. Uh, and let me just refresh and see what's going on out there in Wall Street silver world. Uh, and I want to talk about, too, what the best deals are. Maybe I can do this at the same time. Uh, these are not good deals. Um, I don't know who's giving those away. Stack and Morgans. Do not buy Morgan dollars. I'm a coin dealer. Unless you're a collector, stay away from Morgan dollars and peace dollars uh, and collectible type of stuff. Uh, the premiums on these are quite high. If those are AUs, they're worth 40 bucks. If they're BUs, they're worth 50 to 70 bucks, right in that range, more than likely. Uh, but again, there's only 0.77 ounces of silver in these. So you, as a silver stacker, you're not buying these. Don't buy these things. 
uh, as a collector, certainly buy them. Silver Eagle, still way overpriced. They're double premiums of what most products will bring. And again, if you're in a, a bull market with silver uh, and you're selling, you're going to be in there with your Silver Eagles that you paid 7 and 8 bucks over, and some of you might have paid as high as 12 bucks over for them. And you're going to be standing next to the guy with a 100-ounce generic silver bar, and you're going to get about the same price. And you're going to look over and you say, why did I pay so much of a premium? I'm getting about the same price. Why? Because while you're selling into a bull market, hopefully, if you're smart, you're going to sell part of your silver and gold into a crazy bull market when it happens, if it happens. No, if it happens, but if we get into bubble territory, which is different than a bull market, okay? If we get into bubble territory with precious metals, hopefully I'll know, you'll know, we'll sell part of it, and we'll buy it back when it drops uh, somewhat. That's bubble territory. Uh, but when you sell into bubble territory and you got all sellers and no buyers, your Silver Eagle premiums are worth squat, and that's the truth. Um, let's go down here. That's pretty cool stuff. Guys are making their own silver things. Uh, again, these are polished, clean, piece and silver dollars and Morgan dollars. They're still overpriced. Even in circulated conditions, these are still overpriced, folks. Uh, I think even the nastiest silver dollars, there's only, what, 0.77 per 10. Uh, so let's just say eight, $16, 17, 18, uh, 19. It's probably about 19 bucks worth of silver in a silver dollar net right now, 18 or so, 18, 19. Uh, and even the crappiest ones, they're bringing 25 plus. So don't buy those. It's a bad deal for silver stackers. And... Uh, Let's keep going down here. I love the memes on Wall Street silver. <laughs> There's Kermy. I don't want to get involved with these conspiracy theorists. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, okay. Kind of a cute reference to people that are in denial about uh, what Ted Butler talks about. I get it. And, uh, oh, hey, listen, if you're going to own silver, you might as well have some fun with this. <laughs> I like, God, there's so much creative stuff out here. It's, it's just fun for me to watch. After dealing in silver and gold for 40 years, you get a little bit bored. Then all of a sudden you see people using it for toys <laughs> or, or just making things out of it. It's pretty funny. And the memes, like I said, I love the memes. Um, Congo Silverback. Uh, what else is going on out here? I've heard that these tigers are like two ounces. Is that two ounces? Yep. And they're running for like 90 bucks. That's too much, folks. 45 bucks each. You know, unless you're a collector. It's cool to buy them, but if you're stacking silver, don't buy this type of product. Again, unless you could buy it for under $4 per ounce premium. And right now, I got to tell you, we got to talk about premiums here and availability. There's some crazy stuff going on. Um, I'm going to get into that in a moment. We're going to take a look at uh, uh, Friday's video. I'd like to thank everyone. I talked about Crooked Comics. You know what? Uh, yeah, comics is crooked. I should have really blamed it on the uh, managed money and, this, <laughs> and the commercial banks that uh, manipulate these uh, markets. But uh, comics is crooked because they're allowing these uh, people to play in their marketplace uh, and, and, and really screw the little guy and all the other players. They're allowing these large players to come in and screw everybody else. And, and, and really just what it is is a sham. It's really a sham. And, and again, read Ted Butler if you want to know exactly why and how. Uh, don't ask me, ask Ted. <laughs> uh, by the way, I've been doing a lot of Ted promoting lately, and he doesn't even know me. He doesn't even know who I am. So uh, I'm not getting any money or any kind of uh, perks or anything. I'm not even getting a free subscription, damn it. <laughs> so uh, I just think the man is spot on. And when someone's spot on, you uh, you know, you, you talk about it. Uh, let's uh, go over to some comments here, and then I'm going to talk about what the best deals are. In fact, I'm going to talk about what the best deals are right now and what's going on out there. Uh, currently, and don't forget to share and save and like my video too. And if you thought I talked too long, I hit that button. I always have one guy that does at least. So, <laughs> um, products out there. There's some. It's tightening up right now. Um, the generic product is is getting a little bit tighter uh, as our. Uh, uh, Eagles out there are still tight. I heard the U.S. Mint stopped producing them now. Uh, was that purposeful? More than likely, maybe not. Uh, they're probably gearing up for next year's Silver Eagles, uh, but no less an awful time to do it. Um, premiums are going up. A lot of the a lot of the big wholesalers, the guys that don't sell to you, uh, you know, I don't mean so, don't sell to you, but don't sell to the public at all. A lot of the big wholesalers are delayed on product coming in. They're also uh, raised their premium. I saw silver premiums have been raised between 25 cents and 50 cents an ounce across the board. Stay away from, uh, what I can tell you, stay away from uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, 90% right now. I loved it for the longest time. I showed you guys how to make money on 90% not too long ago uh, by trading it for other silver and putting more silver in your pocket. Uh, but the price is just insane. If you have 90, trade it for some other product before all the premiums start going up across the board, which they are. Uh, uh, and as far as Silver Eagles goes, don't buy them. Unless you're collecting them, don't buy them. They're overpriced. You're not going to get your money back on them. You're not going to get that premium back. You could have just bought more silver with it, in my opinion. Uh, gold, uh, not as tight. Uh, supply is still kind of okay with gold. There's different, you know, one moment we've got availability to Eagles. There's always availability to Gold Eagles, and the premiums have come down uh, quite a bit. So Gold Eagles aren't an awful buy at this price, all right? Uh, versus where they were, 200 bucks over. You know, they're closer to that 115 to 120 over an hour in that range. Uh, but there are better deals to buy out there. Gold bars for spot plus 75, uh, maple leaves and other things uh, uh, in that 80 to uh, 90 dollar range. So gold's got availability and the premiums aren't gone up substantially. However, we do notice there's times when certain products just aren't availability. So it's not like it used to be still, folks. Uh, both products are still tight, but silver being the tightest. Uh, let me look over comments from last week's show, and not too many of them. Uh, Dario, thanks for watching. They crush it down to make gold and silvers mad because they're cutting in their profits. Yeah, yeah well, you know, they're... read Ted Butler, Dario. I think you're going to be very impressed, and you're going to be, once you read Ted Butler, you're going to be way smarter than most of your friends in the silver business or silver stackers out there. Uh, Jack says, how reliable the smartphone ping test for testing gold and silver coins? I'm not qualified to answer, sir. Um, um, I'm, I really couldn't tell you. I, I do a ping test using my ear. I can tell you what a Krugerrand sounds like. I mean, that's one of the easiest things to do. If you have one, if you have two Krugerrands and you're buying a third one, it's so easy to tell uh, that the third one's real just by doing a ping test on the other two. It'll sound exactly the same. Unless you're tone deaf or have bad ears, you don't need a ping test. You can just use the real product to do it. As far as a ping test on silver and, and pure gold, it sounds more like a dull thud to me. So that would be harder for me to determine. Uh, but again, don't know how accurate those. I have a uh, XRF machine, which is about fifteen to seventeen thousand bucks. Uh, I got an expensive, uh, specific gravity type machine that's very accurate and enclosed in plastic. Blah blah blah. Uh, but most of the time, I don't even use them. I can tell just by holding, hold, looking at them, and holding them. Uh, once you've seen enough stuff, I mean, you really, you know. I had an old guy once tell me that he could bite uh, or he could taste a counterfeit gold coin, and he literally would put a gold coin in his mouth. Now, he was an old-timer that bought and sold gold and silver coin. Uh, I didn't believe it, but then one day I heard that there's arsenic used or some kind of chemical used when they make fake coins, and maybe he could taste it. Maybe his sensitivity was that good, but um, I don't know. Uh, NG, hey, nice to see you posting. Thanks for uh, watching, Don. Good to see you there. And uh, I'll get a chance to try to listen to Greg if I can. Uh, put a link in uh, one of your comment sections. We'll listen to him for sure. Uh, I don't mind you guys sharing links. Uh, Rush says, I can't figure out it takes about 5 million Venezuela boulevards to buy one troy ounce of silver. Um, I think you figured that out later in your comment on a video from up here. But uh, yeah, uh, they're having big issues down there. And by the way, Ecuador sounds like a wonderful country. I've met people from Ecuador, and uh, uh, very nice people. And maybe I'll get a chance to go down there one day. And, and thanks for watching. I appreciate it, Russ. Uh, Joey from Seattle. Hey, thanks, bud. Uh, JM Bullion. I know, I know. They got that military discount, and I can't possibly say you shouldn't buy from getting that military discount that you have. And uh, uh, but at one point, you're going to need to sell this stuff too. So I still think that you should. Um, you don't have a good local coin store, and you are maybe more in a remote area in Seattle. I don't know. Um, and they're closed two days a week. That just sucks. Uh, I'd still, when you get a chance to go out driving around, Joey, and you get an hour or two out of town, do a Google search. Just see if you can find one guy or something. Hit one guy. You, what if the Internet goes down? Or what if, I know that sounds crazy, but or what if uh, uh, that JM goes down? Or what if uh, you need to sell this stuff and you need to raise cash real quick? Find a good guy like myself. I mean, you may have to travel a few hours, but I can't imagine that guys like myself are that rare. Um, thanks for watching, Joey. I appreciate it. And you have a great day, sir. Mike, uh, no one understand why people are complaining. Perfect time to buy. I will agree with you 100% there. Uh, hey, Inspector Jason. Uh, thanks, man. Appreciate that, and I'll keep it up. Own nothing to be happy. Uh, I always like that name. 
Uh, and I like the little sheep there, too. It's hard not to fall in love with God's money. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey, Amerit Pride, nice to see you. Uh, or nice to hear from you. And uh, next in, I'm from Malaysia. No, I, I'm not a big fan of uh, FB right now after what they did to me. Um, uh, Deplatforming after 12 years for not saying anything bad either. I just quoted another site, uh, innocuous kind of uh, uh, link to, and they said I was spread, spreading hate and violence. Come on, give me a break. Uh, I'll... I, I got such a big distaste in my mouth for FB right now that uh, uh, all I can think of is a big F U to FB. So, hey, ch thanks for watching, Nixon. I appreciate it. Tree Climber, uh, and we do. I think uh, my, my uh, staff has a FB account for the company under commercial. So take a look if you want. Uh, Tree Climber says, Texas governments cannot do business with... Uh, yeah, I saw that. That's kind of cool. I like your Governor Abbott. You know, I don't know a lot about him, but uh, he's made some good decisions based on what's happening over the last couple of years. And so has Ron DeSantis in Florida, uh, in my opinion. You know, the business, uh, the economy down here is doing really well. And despite what people are, it's funny too, I, I was talking to some lady from Boston because, uh, uh, you know, I was talking to her about, she, she just traveled down here on vacation. She was on the beach and I was just kind of chatting to her. She walked up to me and said, hey, how you doing? Um, you know, and uh, uh, she said, uh, I can't believe how nice it is down here. You know, she's in Lauderdale by the sea, right here. She's in this town, right here. And we were underneath, actually underneath this pier over here. And she says, it's so beautiful. She says, I watched the news up in Massachusetts, and it's like you guys are dying. You have people laying dead. She didn't say it like that, but she made it sound like, you know, she said that the news where she lives up in Massachusetts made it sound like Florida was just falling apart, you know, because of uh, certain things. I'm not going to discuss them, uh, but Florida was going and she was just amazed. She said it was so beautiful. She loved seeing the businesses open, the restaurants open, nobody having to wear certain things, and uh, uh, nobody living in fear. Uh, and again, that's what Florida's like, folks. Any of you don't, don't not any of you hearing anything otherwise on the news, corporate news, you're being lied to. Uh, and again, that's not even my opinion. That's the truth. Well. Let me move into the end of the show, which is me saying, hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the subscribe and like button. I really appreciate it. Hope you're doing well, and uh, hope you enjoyed this video as well. Make sure you check out Ted Turner and got it and read into details how this market is rigged because it will make you smarter than every other silver stacker and gold stacker out there. Not every one of them, but most of them. Most of them don't take the time to read this stuff. Well, thanks for watching. Have a great day, and uh, talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.